So Peter Yan was doing media talking about his fight coming up with Aljo, and he brought up, and this is not the first time he's done it, Yan. He brought up TJ Dillashaw. And it just puts you in a really interesting spot, right? The mere fact that Jan wants to be the champion, but not, not only have the belt, but he wants to be recognized by the masses. I mean, right, we all go to work, but it's very rarely that we get told good job. But if we're, if we're to be fair, it feels really good when you are. It's one of those cool things when somebody recognizes what you did and tells you that they appreciated what you did. And this sport is no different. And the mere fact that Jan would like to be told that regardless of having the belt, I respect. I respect that competitor in him. I respect the fact that he's looking at TJ as a guy who was champion who never lost, but no longer has the championship. Now, I bring this to you because so many people are saying TJ Dillashaw should not be able to come right into a title fight because he was suspended. If you believe that, don't forget that you're taken away from Yon. If your moral high ground is to go out and punish TJ, don't forget there's another side to that coin where Jan, who has done nothing wrong, is asking for it. Just don't forget that because I feel as though you may have to be confronted with this sooner than later. TJ Dillashaw is eligible. TJ Dillashaw matters. TJ Dillashaw is on the tip of people's tongue, but TJ Dillashaw does not have an opponent, which just, just kind of makes you think, okay, Somebody is waiting for Aljo and Yawn to get these things settled. See where that goes. See who comes out on top. See what they want to do. But what they want to do has to be relevant. If we're going to let Aljamain Sterling finally get a world title fight, go out there, compete, and become world champion, okay, let's take it from that perspective. But we're not going to show him the respect of even listening to what it is he wants and or granting it to him. We're not even we're not even going to listen to it. We're being a little bit of a jerk to Aljo for no reason, aren't we? Aren't we showing a little bit of a lack of appreciation to the hard work that he did? Now we can decide whether we're going to do it. I'm I'm asking you a basic question, which is, are we going to listen to him? And the same has to go for Yon. All the hard work that Yon did in the middle of a pandemic, and he goes to Fight Island, and he takes out Jose Aldo, amongst the greatest the sports ever did, and he come in, and now he, he defeats Aljo Sterling. But we're not even going to listen to his request as to why he would like to fight TJ. It seems as though it's a very fair topic, but it also seems as a topic that's going to come up. The fact that TJ Dillashaw doesn't have an opponent but is eligible for one, if you're trying to connect the dots, there's got to be a clue. And the fact that Peter Yon, who's the sitting champion of the world, let's see if this is true when the boys get done on Saturday night, but he's already calling for Dillashaw. What do you think if Peter Yon beats Aljo Sterling, that then he's going to change his mind on who he wants to fight? And he's saying before the fight he wants to fight TJ. Why would his mind possibly change? And why would we be so disrespectful to Yon that we can't even hear him out. If the guy has done everything right and he wants to go down as the best, not just have the belt, but he wants to be recognized. And it must be that Jan feels that people are questioning. Jan must feel questioned in some way. He's got a fight coming up with Aljo. I watched the interview. He said Aljo's name zero times and he said Dillashaw's twice. Peter Jan has never done anything to insult or upset me. And when I say me, I'm, I'm the collective we, the viewer. Has he? Because if he hasn't, and we respect what he did, and what he wants is TJ, there is no reason that we shouldn't listen.